Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Al, and Patch 1026 is finally here, bringing with it never before seen content and even a game mode for World of Warcraft. This patch is absolutely filled with plenty of new rewards, cosmetics, and even mounts for you to unlock, and even features a handful of massive class changes, as well as some more prep work ahead of Season 4, though Season 4 stuff is going to be released at a much later time. For now though, I wanted to go over all of the major features that are launching with 10 to 6 to give you all a bit more of a detailed rundown of everything you can expect with this new Dragonflight update. But right before that, most of you guys watching these kind of update videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you remind, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight 1025 or any future updates for patches like 1026 or the War Within Alpha. The first update of the 1026 will be a brand new limited time Plunderstorm Pirate event, which is just absolutely a wild new way to experience World of Warcraft. This event is going to be available for everybody, whether you are currently playing Dragonflight on retail or whether you mostly play Classic. Every player that has a subscription will have access to this event. Unlike World of Warcraft that we know and love, this event is going to be ran by an entirely different rule set. It's essentially WoW's take at an action-based battle royale game mode, which allows you to play a classless character and customize your class and abilities inside of every single match, with every match presenting you different combinations. This new game mode is going to be more active than passive, so even things like auto attacks will become active abilities for you to use. You will also notice that the UI for this system will be a little bit more streamlined to be MOBA-esque, with slots for healing abilities, basic combat abilities, as well as all of the spells that you unlock throughout the match. All of the abilities that you find will come with different rarities, which progress with power and can even change how they function depending on their rarity. Movement will also be different inside of this new mode. Players will experience no fall damage, but will also have access to movement abilities such as double jumps. You will be able to collect spells and abilities by slaying players and monsters within this event, which is going to feature a mix of PvE combat as well as objectives, as well as PvP specific challenges. For those of you that like PvP, you can expect the classic PvP based combat, but for those of you that are more PvE inclined, monsters inside of this area will be a bit more interactive with new telegraph mechanics that are going to be a little bit more action oriented, so you can't just stand still and DPS things down. With it being a pirate themed event, you could also expect plenty of pirate themed rewards as well. All of these rewards will be unlocked behind a new renowned system just for this event. And you'll be able to progress through this new renowned track by completing a mix of objectives both PvE and PvP specific with this new mode. And in order to make sure that the playing field is as even as possible, all matches are going to be separated with solo players queuing up against solo players and duos queuing up against duos. There's also going to be a revive mechanic for dual players, which may make it a little bit easier for newer players to dive into. Also, no add-ons will be allowed for this event, so you can't modify your UI or give yourself any kind of advantages from any other players. But the UI has also been streamlined and simplified to make it as easy for new players to dive right into. As of right now, Plunderstorm is a experimental feature that's planned to be a limited time event. But there are listening to player feedback, and if players love this new game mode, then it could potentially return to possibly be an evergreen feature going forward. Besides this, Patch 1026 is also going to bring with it plenty of new class sheets, though a good portion of them are planned for Season 4, specifically when it comes to the tuning of the various tier sets for that upcoming season. But to keep this part of the video more relevant for the 10 to 6 specifically, we do see a handful of new class changes specifically for monks and priests. Starting with Mystery or Monks, they get access to two new talents. One of them is Dance of Chi Ji from the Windwalker spec, where your spells and abilities have a chance to make your spinning crane kick do 300% more damage to really facilitate that Fist Weaver gameplay. A brand new talent is also being added called Peer into Peace, where 5% of overhealing with Soothe the Mist will spread it to 3 nearby allies. Soothe the Mist will also follow the targets of Enveloping Mist or Vivify and its channel time is being increased to 4 seconds. Then we have other talent changes like Resplendent Mist, which will cause Gusts of Mist, your mastery, a 30% chance to do 75 or 150% more healing, which is buffed up from the 50 and 100% more healing values. 
And finally, Peaceful Mending now becomes a one talent point node, which will increase the healing that allies receive from Enveloping Mist and Renewing Mist by 40% while Soothing Mist is active, which better promotes healing Cast Weaver gameplay. Then we have the class of Priest, where for all three specs, Leap of Faith will no longer interrupt your allies spell cast. This change makes Leap of Faith a much more usable ability and a lot more party friendly and no longer disrupts your allies casting or any of their abilities while you're casting Leap of Faith to plant them in a better location. Then we have a variety of new changes coming to the spec of Holy, starting with changes to some of their talents like Imperial Blaze, which is no longer an active ability but rather a passive effect that procs from using Holy Word Chastise, which will now cause your next two Holy Fires to be instant, costing no mana and incurring no cooldown. Profession Holy Fire will also extend its duration by 7 seconds. Talents like Pontifex also been redesigned where Flash Heal, Heal, Prayer of Healing and Circle of Healing increases the healing of your next Holy Ward by 6%, stack it up to 5 times. The talent of Lightwell has also been redesigned. Once you create a Holy Lightwell, it will attempt to automatically heal any ally within 40 yards that has 50% health or less, and automatically apply Renew on that target. Lightwell will last for 2 minutes or until it heals 15 times, though using holy words, specifically your healing words, reduces the cooldown of Lightwell by 3 seconds, which means far better uptime. Though as holy priests are getting new buffs, they're also getting some nerfs to help rebalance them a little bit, so we see overall holy healing reduced by 7%. However, certain abilities such as Holy Fire and Holy Word Chastise have had the mana cost heavily reduced. Resonant Ward's talent will now cause Holy Wards to increase healing done of certain spells by 20-40%, to 40 lasting for 30 seconds. Divine Ward will increase the effectiveness of Holy Wards by 30% instead of 50, but together with a talent such as Pontifex redesign, this could overall be a greater gain either way. Using Holy Ward Chastise from Divine Ward will increase all damage dealt by 20% and refunds 15 seconds from the cooldown of Holy Ward Chastise. Casting Holy Ward Sanctified with Divine Ward blesses the target ground while healing 5 targets instead of 6, but the healing is being increased by 25%. Casting Holy Ward Serenity with Divine Ward will no longer increase crit chance of heals, which is a bit of a nerf but the rest of the effects do stay the same. The talent of Healing Chorus will now increase the healing of Circle of Healing by 5%, stacking up to 20 times, instead of 2% stacking up to 50 times, which means far better ramp up times and Prayful Litany will now heal for 100% more to the most injured ally instead of 30, which is quite a decent buff. The talent of Harmonious Apparatus has been renamed to Voice of Harmony, and Voice of Harmony now causes Holy Nova to reduce the cooldown of Chastise as well as Holy Fire. Talent Gales of Song has become a 1 talent point cost without reducing its 2 point values. Then there's also been some new talent interconnections within the Holy Priest talent tree. Talents such as Empowered Renew and Rapid Recovery have been removed, and the final three rows of the talent tree of the Holy Priest, primarily closer to the capstones, have been quite a bit reorganized. As part of the 10 to 6 update, there has also been some bug fixes, specifically when it comes to time walking raids, where they fixed a lot of bugs for some of the encounters of the Old War time walking. Previously, Older War Time Walking was completable, even with all the bugs involved, but they did end up fixing a lot of the interactions within the raid which has been one of the more fun experiences of time walking, especially if you got a bunch of alts that you want to catch up in gear, while also going through some of the older game content. New glyphs have been made available as of the patch 10 to 6, that now restore the look of the original Covenant abilities that are currently part of the Dragonflight's talent trees. Things like the hunt for Demon Hunter instead of having a fell look, now it can have a more of a Night Fey appearance. Even the abilities for Paladins, instead of having a holy appearance, they can go back to the Kyrian Arcane look, similar to the sickly green undead look for Necrolord abilities, as well as that sanguine red look that Venthyr abilities used to have. When it comes to PvP changes for 10-6, to 6, we got some adjustments to Battleground Blitz Brawls. Overall, for the most part, they're very happy with how Battleground Blitz has worked out so far though certain maps and certain team matchups do need to be readjusted to create a bit more of a balanced experience. Specifically, we got flag carrier maps such as Twin Peaks and Warsong Gulch, and if neither team has a tank on their team, then it's going to allow whoever is carrying the flag a buff called Empowered Carrier, 
which will increase that player's maximum health by 10%, increase the movement speed by 30%, and will allow the player to take 25% less damage for 4 seconds when they get hit by an enemy stun. This buff is present in order to help support players that don't have a tank on their team. However, if tanks are present for either of the team's sides, then this buff will be disabled. We also get some changes regarding player's movement speed while mounted. For certain larger maps, such as Arathi Basin and Deepwind Gorge, player mounted movement speed is going to be increased to help increase the pacing of the game. However, for every other map that isn't Arathi Basin or Deepwind Gorge, that movement speed is going to go down a bit to also help balance out the pacing of those matches so players are moving too quickly through the environment. Patch 1026 is also adding a brand new Dragonflight Completionist achievement. More importantly, it also allows you to gain Tyven as a rideable mount for this expansion. To get Tyven as a rideable mount, you need to get the achievement called World Awoken, which will require you to basically experience and complete the entire expansion of Dragonflight, from experiencing all of its raids as well as dungeon content, as well as doing the main Dragonflight story as well as side stories as well and earn reputation achievements for all of the major factions of Dragonflight, but also for some of the minor factions as well. Part of the achievement also requires you to complete Pathfinder achievement, as well as all of the achievements related to all of the other world events from previous patches, things like the Time Rifts, the Dream Surges, the Zeralek Cavern achievements, and much more. Besides all of these features, patch 10 to 6 is also going to be the patch when Season 4 will be released. However, Season 4 content and all of these major features will be released a couple of weeks after this patch's launch. Some of the upcoming Season 4 content and changes is going to feature adjustments to our class's tier sets for Season 4 as discussed earlier. There's also going to be a lot of loot changes for both raids and dungeons in Season 4, from different adjustments to some of the trinkets, some of the power increases and power decreases for some of the party trinkets, as well as loot table adjustments for raids such as Vault, Abyss, as well as Emergisil in Season 4, as well as a brand new Awakened Raids mechanic that's going to be prevalent as part of the Season 4 endgame content. This also includes all of the various boss and enemy changes within dungeons in Season 4 from Mythic Plus content, as well as a major overhaul to Mythic Plus, Heroic and Mythic Zero dungeons as well. Players who have earned the Fairlath Legendary from the Emergence Raid will be able to upgrade it for Season 4. Same thing goes for Evokers who have earned their Legendary from the Aberyst Raid will also be able to upgrade it for the upcoming season. However, a huge portion of that Season 4 content is still a bit of an unknown to us right now. Not until we see Season 4 over on the BGR, which should hopefully be shortly after the launch of Patch 1026. But for now, this is going to be everything we got so far regarding some of the new content and features coming with the Patch 1026. I want to thank all of you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel, probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.